Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. Today we are going to have a big food preservation day. So I've got Peter and Maria and Joe. Actually, they're all participating in helping out with this today. We are working through apples. We are working through tomatoes and just a lot going on here today. So I'll just kind of show you a little bit of our setup here. So what we have going, Peter is actually working on apple slices. So that there is an apple peeler corer slicer. Mine is from Pampered Chef. You can find them all over the place now. So we put the nicest, roundest apples in a bowl for him. He runs it through there. He cuts it into thirds and plops that's it so into... Small, I think. What? That, one is that one's too small? Okay, that's fine. And these apples are in lemon water. So we just put a few splashes of lemon juice in here. No, I drain them off. I put them in here to about the six, six to seven cup line, and then I put them into my bags. I will label these six cups apples, and I'm gonna be putting these down in the freezer. And now these apples we will use for apple pies, as well as apple crisps throughout the winter. And the goal is to work through this whole box. It was full, we're working our way. If there's a soft one, we plop it into that box over there, which is going to be apple sauce apples. But these are all this variety. I don't know if this is Duchess or, honestly, I don't know what variety this is. But um, yeah, we have six trees and I think every single one is a different variety. I wish I was better at identifying them. I know that these are a Macintosh and or a Cortland. We have one of each and they look so similar to me. They're hard to identify or to tell apart. But anyway, that's what's <laughs> happening. Peter's gonna work through this whole box. I feel like this whole box, this was a full box. So then we actually just use a little soapy water and Maria has been washing them. And we put them in here, we give them a good rinse. The applesauce apples I put over here, I quarter them. And then I have my Nesco and I put them into the Nesco here. I have a pint of water in the bottom of the Nesco as well as probably a quarter cup of lemon juice and I just gave them a really good stir. I have it set to about 250 right now and about every 15 or 20 minutes I'll give them a stir because I just want those to cook down, get nice and soft. I should stop taking the lid off <laughs> if I want them to cook down. And then I also over here have tomato juice and sauce. So yesterday, pretty much the same process. I put my quartered tomatoes in here. I cook them down. And once they have cooked down and they're, you know, just juicy and mushy, I ladle off all of the juice. I ladle it into the jars, but like through just a little strainer to get any seeds or anything. And now I have apple juice or apple. I have tomato juice. So I made three pints, three quarts. Oh, am I making the mistakes today? three quarts, I need to get my head in this game, of tomato juice from the apples I did yesterday. From the tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> apples, tomatoes, it just feels like one and the same right now. I cooked down, no, probably about two thirds to three fourths of a Nesco of tomatoes. Cook those down, three quarts. I, I know, Peter, I almost said it again. Three quarts of tomato juice. And then I also ran the remaining tomatoes that were left, I ran them through my food strainer and made tomato sauce. It was a little bit runnier than I wanted it, so I did put it back on the stove for about 20 minutes at just a real low boil, just to kind of thicken up a little bit. And I made two quarts of tomato sauce as well as a pint of tomato sauce. And this one I actually put garlic powder as well as two teaspoons of Italian seasoning in there and that just as kind of a start of a spaghetti sauce. Usually I just like to can it regular and then I can add whatever seasoning to it I want. And I also like to have some quarts of tomato sauce as well as pints of tomato sauce. Again, depending on what I'm making, uh, then I have like the right size. 
What I forgot to mention is that I actually did not can these up yet. I just jarred everything yesterday, and then um, we just had other things we had to do last night. So anyway, I'm just going to get these into my water bath canner right now. And I'm going to double check to be sure with juice and sauce what the, what the canning times are. So it looks like juice is 45 and tomato sauce is 40. Um, these are only, this pint is only 35. When you're water bath canning though, you can can it longer. That's not going to, um, you know, that, that's not going to cause a problem. So I'm just gonna put all of this in 45 minutes and call it good. I'm so happy when I pulled all of the tomato products out. Um, about three minutes after I lowered them into the water, I heard like a funny pop. I thought, oh, please tell me that I didn't uh, crack a jar. Peter, apples. But all is well. <laughs> so I'm just gonna let this um, set here for 24 hours before I, um, what I always like to do then is to remove the bands, give them a little bit of a wash down, label them, of course, and then get them down. There we go. There was the first one popped, but then get them down onto the pantry shelves. What are you guys mad about? Peter's mad at me because they're Peter's so mad at you. I know there's supposed to be a little soap, Peter, because we. I thought she was supposed to rinse them. Well, they didn't get rinsed all the way. So rinse them all the way and then get those over there. You're going to keep working on more apple slices, right? Yep. So this is the fourth bag of apple slices to go into the freezer. You don't like washing? No. Why? Because I just don't like washing. What would you rather do? Play Barbies. Oh, play with Barbies. <laughs> Put the last three bags in. We got three more bags going into the freezer. And, you know... That's like, if we used one bag a week, which we probably wouldn't use one bag a week, but anyway, it would be kind of nice to have a total of, let's say 12. Do you yeah. think, or think we're gonna, do you think we're gonna get 12 in there, Peter? We have that bowl of apples right there. There's no way that's gonna make six, six bags, but we do have a whole nother box of apples out in the garage. So we might just keep, keep going. So Peter is just cleaning up from the apple slices. We are going to get that spot. And I'm not doing anything else. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I don't think he gets that. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to get that spot over there set up for doing applesauce. And I have three more six cup packages of apples here to put into the freezer. And so one tip I'd have for you, when you're packing, no. like if you're going to... you. No do the apple slicing like what I'm doing. You don't have to pack no. yours in six cups. No. I just like six cups no. because my apple crisp recipe no. calls for four cups no. of apples. No. I usually, it seems like once they're frozen and then they kind of thaw down again, no. they always, no. it seems like they shrink up. Joe, shh, shh. It just seems like they shrink up. So I like to put them, package them in six cup packages because that just seems to work best for apple crisp. It's also the right amount for a pie. And so that's what that's what I do. If you make smaller pies, bigger pies, deeper pies, or if you want to make smaller apple crisps or bigger, package your apples accordingly. I cannot stress that enough when preserving food is to preserve it in a manner that your family is going to eat. I know, I mean, this is big time. You check out you just type in preserving food on YouTube and thousands and thousands of videos are gonna pop up and everybody's gonna do it a little bit differently. And if you're just getting started in this, it's going to be, you're, right. maybe you're gonna find yourself wanting to just sort of copy what someone else is doing. Copy maybe their method, but don't copy exactly what they do because you need to cook what works for your family and put away food that your family is going to eat. There is no sense in freezing, dehydrating, freeze drying, canning things that your family is not going to eat. Now, is it fun to try something new? Yes. I tried one time a, 
was like a cranapple jelly or jam or something like that and it had lemon peel in it a lot and I thought oh I'm not really so sure about this and guess what I should have left the lemon peel out or I should have done a little bit less because yeah we didn't like it but it is fun to try something new every now and again but you don't want to waste all of your preserved food on a bunch of new recipes all right so just preserve it in the way that your family likes to eat it as well as the size that's going to be right for your family because there's nothing nothing worse this has happened to me before where i canned my pizza sauce in a pint jar and then it only we didn't use quite a whole pint like we probably used about half a pint for on our pizza we don't like it super saucy and then it mm, sat in the fridge pizza. i should have popped it in the freezer i didn't and then it ended up molding and so that's a lot of work <laughs> it is a lot of work to go from uh, seeds to plants to protecting for bugs and keeping your plants watered and then and then just doing everything it takes to get to the pizza sauce stage and then having it mold that's a bummer so anyway just just uh, package your your home preserved foods in the size and the style that your family wants So I know that there's always new people um, finding my channel and so I feel like sometimes that I'm repeating myself but for the new people that are here welcome I'm happy to have you um, this here is a food strainer and I use this a lot for tomatoes salsa cranberry sauce as well as applesauce and you just put your cooked apples they need to be clean and obviously you want to take off any blemishes but you cook down your apples with some water some lemon juice like i did and then you can just run them right through here all of the scraps will come out of this little um shoot here so scraps i mean the apple peels all bits of the core as well as the seeds and the stems and then the sauce, all the flesh, all the cooked down uh, flesh, which is the applesauce part, that goes into a bowl right, right there. So it works really slick. I mean, the nice thing is you don't have to spend the time pouring all of your apples or you know taking the peels off of them. And you get all of that good flavor from the peel cooked into your applesauce. It also makes your applesauce 
or it makes the applesauce really pretty. So depending on the color of the apple peel, uh, you get a pinker or sometimes a more, um, more of a light yellow or sometimes a pink, sometimes even a red, more of a red sauce. We don't add any sugar at all to our sauce. We don't normally add cinnamon. I have in the past, but I kind of found out that Warren is really not a huge fan of cinnamon in his applesauce. So, and I just stopped adding any, any cinnamon as well. And I mean, we all love it, just plain. I mean, it's just apples. applesauce a little bit more on the runny side then you can always add a little more water as you're cooking the apples down if you like it thicker just add a small amount of water by small I guess I mean like I filled up my Nesco and I put actually a quart of water in there and when I had this big pot here this big pot I put in a pint of water maybe I put a little more at all of a sudden it seemed like it was a little needed a little bit more I honestly I can't remember right here there you go. Oh. <laughs> is that delicious oh yeah yes 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 it is isn't it okay so we're going to just scrape this off I'm going to bring over the Nesco because those are probably cooked down Up your sleeves. I think I should have put a little more water in this one, in this pot here. Okay, at this point, we're just going to turn the camera off. We're just going to keep on working through this. We have this Nesco roaster over here. It was full. It cooked down to about, oh, I would say about two thirds. Not, not such a big problem after all. Okay, so anyway, I think what I was saying is that, um, what was I saying, Maria? You were talking that you're gonna turn off the camera? Yeah, here, there's more here, honey. I could have added a little bit more water. I think it's a little bit thick, but that's okay. We still love it thick just as well. And um, we're gonna turn the camera off and just keep moving this through. I'm probably not gonna turn the camera back on, but we're going to cut up more apples get more cooking down in the Nesco and the pot on the stove uh, as soon as we run this through. All right, so when once I got down to the bottom of my big pot, I see that I scorched my apples, which it's so easy to scorch apples. I mean, you just get that a little tiny bit too hot and boom, it scorches them. It also could be that I should have added a little bit more water. I just didn't want my applesauce to get too runny. I've had that happen in the past. And I just like it a little bit thicker. Anyway, I want to show you this. I don't have the box for this anymore, but I'll see if I can link this little thing. It's I think it's just called a pumice stone. It was like 97 cents or something like that at Walmart. And let me just show you how this works. It was bigger, but it kind of like so dissolves cool. away or something. Kind of an annoying sound. I'm going to give this a rinse. See where I still need to see where I still need to get it a little bit. Um, but this works really good on things that are stainless steel. I've actually used it on my sinks. Anyway, works really really well. So now that our pot is washed and clean. Peter is working up these clean apples here and he's going to get those into the pot. And Maria and I are working on filling jars of applesauce because see our bowls are overflowing. <laughs> so let me just run you through how this happens. I don't have all of the fancy canning tools nor do I necessarily need them. 
you know, there's all these like different things that are available out there. You can buy sets where you get all of the canning sort of things in there. I've always just used what I've had on hand. Anyway, here we go. So you fill up your jar. You have to look at the directions for specific foods that you're canning just to see. Nope, that's good. Just to see what the headspace is. The headspace is the distance from the top of the jar down. So applesauce needs a half inch headspace. We may have to actually take a tiny bit out of that, but don't worry about it yet, Maria, because once I, there might be an air bubble. Okay, she already did it. So you just take, whoops, I can't, it's hard to see through the camera. You just take something, slide it along the edge like that, and that gets out any air bubbles that might be in there. Then you need a paper towel that's dampened with vinegar. That'll just clean the rim really well. You put a lid on. The new lids do not need to be warmed like the old lids do, but you can still do that if you would like. And then you just put these on finger tight. You don't have to crank them down, just finger tight. The whole purpose of the ring is just for the just to really hold the lid in place. The canning process, that boiling water process, is what will prepares the food and then uh, prepares it for shelf stable life, as well as when you remove it from the pot of boiling water. Um, then what happens is this will bloop, it'll go down, and that actually seals the like rubber. Let me show you. On the back side, there is a little rubber gasket here that seals it right onto the jar, and then it's shelf stable. All right, so that is the process. We're just going to go through um, that as many times as, as we need to. It looks like from one of these big bowls, these are my big Pyrex bowls, one, two, three, four, about four and a third quarts of sauce. This one over here is even fuller, so we're going to get even more out of that one. I'm getting well, Joe is finally making an appearance today. <laughs> he came in, he was outside and came in and was ready to help. So we got him, make sure you push that down into that hole, okay? So he's just pureeing more applesauce. And we are working really through, low. you're getting very low on applesauce. That's okay. That's okay. We'll be having more bowls. I'm really low. In no time. What? My chocolate chip cookies. We are not making chocolate chip cookies today. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> it's three o'clock right now and we still have Come no, on. we still have a lot to do here. So I have my canner going again. The water bath canner. Quarts of applesauce have to go for twenty minutes. No! Start pushing. <laughs> I can do seven hey, quarts. Meow. We'll let them figure it out over there. I can do seven quarts at a time in here. So no. we'll have seven quarts going. Happy. As the day was going on, all no. of these sealed. I heard all the pops, so I'm happy about that. Tomorrow we will, um, so here's it. what the sauce looks like. And tomorrow what we'll do is label this up, get that put downstairs. The dishes situation is good. We've been keeping up with dishes. I'm actually gonna wash a couple of these things right now and then I have to wash five more jars. I had some siphoning happen on my jars and I know it's because my applesauce is probably thicker than maybe thicker than like if you were to follow the precise directions or something like that with the amount of water that you should add. I know mine is thicker and so and I kind of lifted out some of the jars and I'm like oh shoot I want to let it kind of cool a little bit so I do like to once the timer goes off this is the last canner here and I have five quarts in here. Once the timer goes off, what I like to do is turn off the stove, take the lid off, and then just let them sit there um, for about 10 minutes before lifting out the rack. And then I let the rack sit there for a little bit before I bring them all the way out. That does help so that you don't get so much siphoning, which means siphoning is just that when you bring them up out of the water, what happens is that the 
uh, pressure on the inside of the jar starts kind of squeezing some of the applesauce out. And you can have a chance, there's a higher chance of uh, lid failure because because you end up getting applesauce under in you know like in between the seal and the jar but I haven't ever honestly had any troubles with that but it does make cleanup a little bit of a problem because like no tomorrow I'm gonna take these rings off and then I'll have to wash them all up it just takes a little bit longer so perfect is when they come out like this and everything is clean everything is clean and you can just give it a quick wipe down and put it away but it is six o'clock now. We did get everything washed up. Warren actually came in. He was helping with drying dishes and stuff like that too. We boiled up some brats and he and Peter are outside right now starting up the fire. And we're gonna have um, like a campfire cookout with brats and yes. um, s'mores. So, and this yes. is the applesauce that I did yes. not can. I wanted to keep some for us to eat. I know everyone was looking forward to having a little bit tonight. So maybe when we come in from the campfire, uh, everyone's going to want a little dish of applesauce. And we have one last pile of scraps to take out to the chickens. Oh. And <clears throat> looks like Joe found the graham crackers right away. Did you have a brat yep. already? Yeah, I have a yeah. I just, he I both. Like, Dad both. and Peter said you're lying to me. Oh yeah, man, I just, <laughs> just both. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you are lying to me, huh? You need to have a brat first. So here's a stick. Here's a stick, and then no. you can make a s'more later. No, 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 no. Yes. Just, no, no, no. Uh -uh. The fire looks really good. Who Too was bad. involved in that? Peterbilt it. Nice. It's a, it's a Peterbilt? It's a Peterbilt. Peterbilt fire. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, it looks nice. I need to get over there close because it is cold it's out here. Me too, it's so cold too. Well, look at you, you're in shorts and a t shirt. Oh, yeah, I mean, I feel so cold after it. Yeah, well, but then. Do you want mustard? Uh, yeah. Use carefully. Yeah. Alright, carefully. I, I, be careful. <laughs> Holy crab. Holy crab. We're not fishing crabs. There you go. Holy. I think you could. Yeah. Warren's the first one to perfect the, the whatever those are, like giant camp fire size marshmallows. Mama, I just came out. Oh, I know that's sad. Out. You made a double one. You made a double. You're double. Well, with those giant marshmallows. Bubble. You have to. Yeah. One graham cracker square just isn't big enough. 